Okay, uh, this is the final iteration of my uh, homemade voltage regulator rectifier. Uh, you know, it's a pardon the nasty looking stove, but it's the only surface I have right now. Uh, so, um, the first two videos I have uh, really explain the theory and design um, of my creation here. And this is really just to kind of show uh, where I finally am and with a functioning product that um, is, you know, uh, set to go, ready to use. Um, so I'm still, I, I, I'm using the case for the regulator uh, as purchased from the store. Uh, I got my three rectifier units wired up inside here, bolted to the casing. Um, this tape really is just to um, act as a temporary cover, weather seal. Um, I'll get to that in a moment. Uh, however, just underneath this cover, I'll put you down for a second. is the circuit board for the regulator. Um, uh, as you can see, I've modified it uh, to fit my purposes. Um, the biggest being uh, I needed it to fit in this package uh, along with the rectifiers um, and, and make it do so with as little external wiring modifications as possible. Uh, so you have your four terminals, uh, I, A, S, F, respectively, um, and then you have a ground. This ground goes through the casing to the other side here and hooks in with the uh, negative side, DC side of the rectifying section. Um, this field, this F terminal is the field terminal and goes off to the uh, coil. Now the, the, the issue is uh, with this jumper here, as soon as I can get this to focus, it, uh, it, there is a, a um, you know, a medium power uh, logic level transistor that uh, really does the, the thinking of the regulator and, um, you know, determines when the uh, power to the field coil should be cut off or not. Um, you know, it has to be sunk for heat dissipation purposes, um, but it needs to be uh, protected from grounding out as well. So uh, that's part of the reason why I modified the ground, you know, to get the case out of the circuit. Um, and, but when I decided to take the circuit board from this side and put it over here, I got rid of the uh, connection that was made internally from the post that held the board in place. Um, from the collector, which is actually the case of the transistor, uh, if you can see, um, and uh, brought it up to the, the PCB here. So I, I made a wire jumper and I soldered it. It's it's not pretty, um, but it, it works and it's not going to fall apart on me. Uh, I will uh, maybe get around to making that uh, a little bit better looking in the future. Um, now, the, the one modification I've made since the uh, last iteration of this is my light. Um, now, what I found out was the regulator, as it's intended uh, for use on, you know, Ford trucks and such, is designed so that the switched 12-volt ignition source um, comes goes through a... Uh, a dummy light on the, the dashboard um, you know, to indicate whether or not the charging system is functioning. Uh, now that that resistance of the light, because uh, it's wired in parallel with a 15 ohm resistor, uh, to, you know, to, to turn the light on or off depending on how what your kind of voltage situation is there, um, or current rather, uh, that resistance, resistive load on the incoming 12 volt circuit um, is designed to be there. And I had, I had run this without any, anything in, in line. And uh, there's a, a resistor right here that comes off of the, the in incoming 12 volt. 
and it fries. Um, so what I found is I just wired this light in series with my incoming 12 volt line to the uh, t the switch to 12 volt lead on the regulator, and um, whenever I get around to finding a suitable resistor, I'll put that in parallel, and um, that'll help the light turn off. Because what happens is if I turn the ignition switch on, this light comes on, um, indicating that power is coming to the regulator. Uh, but once the bike is running and charging, um, the light stays on. Uh, so <laughs> it's it's kind of annoying. It's a little ridic it's a little ridiculous in my opinion. Um, I will find a suitable resistor and just wire that in so that I can eliminate the light in total. Or maybe I'll wire it up to my my instrument cluster and it'll be you know it'll be a, a charging system idiot light. Um, but in either case, you need this. Uh, or else you will fry the board, and that's that's not going to make any mum's day better. So um, that's it, really. That's the final iteration. I got my connectors here. I'm using the same amount of stock wires. Um, it's just, as you can see, a little bit modified. Um, the tape was on there to provide uh, weather uh, protection. However. Obviously, that's not going to do in all conditions. I have a template here um, from cardboard. I covered it in um, saran wrap that will fit. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my my fiberglass repair kit uh, and 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 mold the uh, fiberglass to this, um, which I can then drill some holes through to mount it as well as uh, feed the wires through. And then um, I can use just some RTV to uh, seal it. And that should hopefully do the trick. And that will make it a 100% safe, weatherproof unit um, that is plug and play with our charging systems and um, is a viable sort of modular alternative to the $140 uh, minimum that I've seen uh, for a stock replacement. Um, so, uh, as always, let, let me know if you have any questions, thoughts, opinions, suggestions, whatever, um, and I will come back probably to show you the um, seal, the cover that I make, and um, you know, let you let you see the 100% uh, finished product um, when I have it.